Let me ask you a, I think a, a related question. I've, I've heard you say, and I may butcher this a bit, but something about anger being the royal road yeah. to self-improvement. Could you That's unpack exactly that a bit? That's exactly is what it? I said. Yeah. <laughs> anger is the royal road to self-improvement. I'll tell you why I believe that. There are, broadly speaking, three categories of negative emotion we talk about in therapy. Anger, fear, and sadness, right? Psychotherapy consulting rooms are full. I specialized in fear or anxiety. Some people specialize in sadness or depression. Um, people with anxiety or depression uh, tend to be self-blaming and they typically, they often seek, not always, but generally they, they're, they're more likely to seek therapy. And usually people have a mixture, like anxious people also have some anger, like depressed people also often have quite a lot of anger, but pr pr predominantly they're anxious or depressed. They're likely to, to go and seek help and to feel that there's something wrong. Angry people are very different. The anger is an externalizing emotion. Angry people usually blame other people. So it's unusual for people who are predominantly angry to self-refer for treatment. Where we see angry people in therapy is in institutions. So in schools, kids will be mm. referred for angry outbursts in the classroom. In relationships also, one partner will uh, tell or ask the other partner to go to therapy because they've got a problem with their anger. In prisons, uh, inmates are referred for anger management. In the military, someone might be told that they need to go and have anger management. But angry people don't usually seek treatment themselves. It's usually at the behest of other people that they're told to go and seek treatment, right? So angry people, more than depressed or anxious people, lack insight like, into the fact that they have a need to do psychotherapy. Now, what does that tell you, right? That tells you that in a modern society, which is dominated, awash with self-help, right that if left to their own devices people are more likely to go online looking for ways to deal with anxiety and depression but unlikely to seek self-help for anger right then they need usually other people to tell them or at least they come into therapy with depression or anxiety and at some point maybe the therapist brings up the topic of their anger as well anger is typically ignored in modern self-help literature and online no one's interested in addressing their anger Anger is also in some ways the most problematic emotion in terms of society. Anger gets into politics, like it gets into relationships, it gets into society, it affects the way we interact with other people. Anger makes us want to hurt and punish other people or other groups of people like, or other nations or races of people or, or, or other religions. You know, anger turns into spite and hatred, you know, and so it affects society, in a sense, in a more direct way, in a more pervasive way than fear and sadness do, right? It's more mm. of a public emotion. Now, I, so first of all, I think most people have a massive blind spot for the way that anger is affecting them pathologically. And so that means there's more opportunity. It's like a, a, a gold mine that's, let, that's untapped, in that sense, right? There's a festering wound mm. there that's gone untreated in the, in the majority of people because by its very nature, we, we tend to ignore it unless someone else draws our attention to it. Um, and I think particularly, you know, in, in some ways with social media and so on, that people are given a, an outlet for anger where it kind of goes unchallenged. Um, people say things with a veil of anonymity on social media that they wouldn't get away with saying to your face you know, like you challenge them more, it'd be more obvious that what they were doing was weird and kind of crazy talk. Like, but, you know, that kind of crazy talk goes unchallenged more. Um, they have an outlet for it. And, and that means that they do more and more of it, like, and it becomes more habitual. So it's the royal road because it's like a festering wound that's gone untreated. That's where the therapy could actually happen. It's the biggest opportunity, like, for mm. self-improvement in most cases. And... You know, also because anger is particularly an interpersonal emotion, there's a lot more opportunity for other people to help us in drawing our attention to the way that we're interacting with them. Um, and it, it, so in some ways, it's kind of easier once you realize this 
to bring to people's attention, you know, to hold a mirror up to them. As long as they're willing mm. to talk to somebody, like, honestly about it, there's a huge opportunity for that other person to hold a mirror up to them and draw their attention to this massive festering blind spot. 